Hello YouTube and welcome to Sober Moto Vlog this time. I'm still hurting from the night before, but I wanted to make a video because I did a lot of riding today. You saw a Cayman GT4 escaping me there. I was going slow after the events of yesterday. Taking it easy. I knew there were speed traps out there. Now I'm on an RC390, heading up onto the highway. Good stuff. So, what is the topic of today's vlog? Not really sure. I might just like kind of narrate. I might interject a few thoughts. That's all I can really say. It's probably going to be a different feel from a drunk moto vlog. I hope it will. I don't know. We'll see. Man, that was a long clip, huh? I didn't know how to, how to fill the space with talking. So I included this clip here. This is about, you know, RC390. My buddy behind me is on a WR250. We can't really go that fast on the highway. So you're going to get past. You're gonna have Toyota Corollas passing you for sure. Just like before though, right? At the start I was getting passed on my GS and now I'm getting passed on the RST 390. So now we're in DC and we're actually outside of I think we're outside of like the awesome con convention. There was all kind of people dressed up. I was kind of trying to show the, the people on the left there. But and now we're in Chinatown. Very nice place to look at, <laughs> at least. It's pretty cool. This is where we're eating. Easter dinner. <laughs> well, Easter breakfast, really, for me. Headed into the Cherry Blossom Festival. And we are doing so far so good. I waited to the right exit and I did what I was supposed to do, but I make a big mistake. In retrospect, I did everything wrong and we didn't get to actually experience the festival. Which really bums me out. So yeah, here we're sure. supposed to turn left, I don't know where we're going. like I'm doing. We're just in the park, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, you know, okay. pedestrians there act as a stop sign. <laughs> supposed to go left here. We were supposed to stay in the left lane and, and when the road splits where it's about to, we are supposed to go to the left. And I went to the right, so instead of going around the Jefferson Memorial, Memorial on this road that has cherry trees on both sides of you, I went up north and took us on this road here called, get it up, called Main Avenue and Independence Avenue. So, I mean, that was pretty cool. Don't get me wrong. We went down Independence Avenue, and then we got to Ohio Drive, but it, it was, you know, closed off. It's one way. So we turned around and went back the other way. But as you can see, there's cherry trees everywhere. Cherry blossom trees. I don't know why I'm calling cherry trees. What the hell is wrong with me? Go Washington, you know. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool little view there, in my opinion. <laughs> but of course, like I said, if, if we had gone left there, we would have gone down Ohio Drive, and that would have been cherry trees everywhere. What do you 
you gonna do? This way we got in and out more quickly, you know, because we're actually moving along. If we were down on Ohio Drive over by the Jefferson Memorial, we're moving very slowly. As you can see, we're kind of going slower than everyone else. We're, we're more like viewing the trees and stuff from far, further away rather than being like right up in it. Little girl waving. <laughs> Grab the motorcycle a little bit. <laughs> Now we're kind of over where there's more. We've got the DC tour bus here stuck behind. I'm very, I'm showing this because I'm very tentative about changing lanes on the uh, on the KTM. I'm not really sure why. Um, I almost feel like I can't, I'm stiff on the bike, like the position it gets you in. It sort of makes it so you don't want to like look around and like turn your head a lot. It's like a, yeah, I don't know. It's like for it's like because it's a you know bike for racing. It makes it hard to look around because of the position it has you in. You know, they say it's not as aggressive as a super sport. I'm not sure if I agree. This bike feels aggressive. It feels as aggressive as my R6. It might not have like the pegs as far up and back, but it's a road bike. You know, it doesn't have aftermarket rear sets on. The pegs are slightly higher and towards you. Don't a lot of clip people do that with clip-ons anyways. Get the pegs kind of like in a wider angle. It, it seems like you put more pressure on your wrists on this bike than you do with other sports bikes. At least I do. It was hurt. I was I was starting to hurt at this point. So this is kind of back in the thick of things, you know, we turned around, turned around on Independence yeah, Avenue and now we're headed back. If we were to look to our right and look across the Tidal Basin, that's where Ohio Drive is and that's where we wanted to be. Basically, it seems like they allow you to kind of drive through it, you know what I mean? Oh so, uh, well, there's cherry trees everywhere here, which is pretty cool. But it is a little bummed, yeah. See, if you look across to the right there, there's the Jefferson Memorial. Maybe I'll actually look at it, but if you if you look on the, across the water there to the right, you have Jefferson Memorial and Ohio Drive, which is where, like, all the cherry trees are, where it's, like, Cherry Tree Road, pretty much. Cherry Blossom. God darn it. Son of a gun. Yeah, looking at it there. That's where we should have been. But what are you going to do? It, uh, you know, it's a, it was a crazy day. Everyone, I'll show it later here, everyone wants to get on Ohio Drive. There's like a huge wait and you have to go on to it. Like, and you have to merge onto it from far away. And of course, I don't think I was going to be able to stop and take pictures anyways. I think you have to drive straight through. Yeah, look, you can see it to the right here. That's the way to get onto Ohio Drive. I'm pretty sure. You got all kinds of vehicles. That's it. Then we're back in Clifton, back to the usual boring crap that you normally see. I don't know. Should I commentate for this? Just leave the rest, you know? I think I might try to commentate for all of it, but I'm gonna take a quick break. I'm back. This is just some Clifton riding, you know, your standard stuff that I do on this channel. That I'm making these meta vlogs so far. 
That's really what I should say. It's not like standard stuff I do on or for my channel, so to speak. It's just like this, this is like the type of riding I typically do, right? Going around where the road is twisty, having some fun, out like away from civilization, not civilization, away from the city. on the GS. This is, I guess, part two of the video. As you can see, we're following an RR6. <laughs> Not, we're following an R1, right? Very nice motorcycle. Sounds amazing. Although, I mean, it's not my bike, so obviously it doesn't matter what I would want, but I definitely thought the exhaust was loud. Like, holy moly, very loud. I don't really like that. Now we're stuck behind a car. Yep. Sling shots, maybe a little bit. Behind the cigar. So, I mean, this kind of riding, I, I got to wonder, you know, now that I'm looking back at it, I don't know, man. I guess it depends on what kind of riding you want to do and how much risk you're willing to take. As long as you take it easy, I think things will mostly be fine. But if you don't take it easy and you're going all fast and shit, your level of risk really shoots up. I don't really know how fast I'm going here, but it's probably above 35 guy by a good bit, you know what I mean? And people can pull out there can be deer, you can misjudge a corner, all kinds of things can happen. There can be a car coming the other way in your lane, you know, you can have a mechanical malfunction, oil spilled all over the road, Jesus, I think that's about it that I can think of. But any of those things can happen. So I don't know, I mean... And I'm showing this riding that I was doing. And I mean, I don't think this is very aggressive riding, personally. We're not going that fast. Maybe. I, I just don't know. I've never crashed on these roads at the speeds I'm going. It seems pretty fast. You know me and how I like to ride, you know, I'm coming into the turns maybe a little sl more slowly or smoothly, and then I'm rolling on the throttle coming out of the turn. That's typically my MO, you know, slow in, fast out. It's kind of safer too, that way on the street. <coughs> why this guy pulled over here, that's why I showed this clip. It's like, what the heck? Cool, guy. cool, bro. I, I guess you thought we were tailgating you or something? I, I, I'm not really sure. Now we've got a longer clip here. This is Compton Road. We got a little bit of clear road. So I'm just showing again 
if the uh, person I'm filming here is interested. <coughs> I have all this footage now, you know, uploaded of you for you to check out. And I, I don't mean that it's like a criticism necessarily or anything like that. Your riding's pretty damn good. Um, but more of like you can look at yourself and think, you know, did I put the motorcycle where I really, really wanted to? Like, and <laughs> this is where I'm kind of going into rant territory again, but like being able to look at your footage and to jeez ah, I'm saying it wrong being able to put the bike where you want to put it when you're not trying very hard when maybe your concentration level isn't like super duper like I'm on the track I'm going super crazy but at the same time when we're out here riding like this it's pretty serious you know you we're, we're not going 35 miles an hour or less all the time you know and there's like road hazards there's all kind of stuff and we have these roads memorized but at the same time I don't know it's good to be able to see what you're doing and I don't I don't have much of like a critique for you or anything it's just like hey you can think about the way you feel like you look when you ride and then when you see yourself ride usually it's a little different than you'd expect like the way you look on the bike I was definitely having a good time following you around and also, I, I do apologize a little for not being closer. You know, I didn't tell you about this ahead of time. Ah, getting texts from my family. I didn't get this ahead of time, but... So I didn't want to follow him close. And I've only ridden with him on this bike. You know, the way he was talking about his bike, I, I, I felt like maybe I didn't want to say, hey, let me follow you closely. You know what I mean? and ride aggressively and follow you closely. Instead, I was just riding chill, giving him a good bit of space. You know, we're out just having a good time. This vlog thing is what I do because I live alone, right? <laughs> I've got no one else to talk to about stuff, so I guess I have to talk to myself. It's not a bad idea, though. A lot of people keep diaries and do other things, right? Isn't that what this is all about? Cataloging my writing and my thoughts so I can view them later. And making it public is like another thing. I mean, I can't be as personal. You know, because it's like a public, oof, rode into that tree a little bit. That, see, that kind of shit, man. I, you don't run into a fucking tree on the road on a racetrack, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> now we're heading back into the danger zone. Since I'm not ranting. It's a cool little area. You know, this is where the gravel was coming the other direction. The, the road conditions here are usually just unpredictable. And you're out kind of in the middle of nowhere where someone might not drive by you for a while and you just, it's not a good place to go fast. It's a good place to chill. I mean, you can go fast there. I mean, don't get me wrong, if the conditions are good and you've, like, ridden the road before, okay, I mean, it's just in the shade and kind of cold, and if your tires aren't that warm, it's not going to be good to try to, like, drag me, you know? I mean, 
tires are everything. They have a lot of grip. I mean, it's scary how much grip modern tires give you. But at the same time, the, the level of abuse they take beyond the amount of grip they have is very different from a car. You know, where a car, you can hear the tires chirping, you can feel it on the wheel, and there's this kind of progressive feedback where you start pushing the grip too much. The thing is, on a motorcycle, if you push the grip too much, you have a bit of a chance of, you know, crashing and just having the bike slide away from you. So it's kind of a scary thing, right? You go from having all the grip in the world to being flat on your ass with the bike sliding down the road, you know, behind, in front of you, hopefully. And uh, there's nothing you can do about it. It's kind of a scary thing. So I always recommend good tires because the level of grip you actually have isn't something you can necessarily feel. Like these tires, these 50-50 tires have pretty good grip. I've never really felt them slide much. I'd like even, you know, slow-ish sports bike pace. And, you know, it's pretty good. Um, but at the same time, you know, if I were to really push the bike harder, it might not be good for me, you know. So I showed this clip because these are like the hills, the notorious hills on Chapel Road. It always just makes me wonder, like, how do you ride these? You know, do you ride it like the guy in front of me on the left near the middle of the road? Or do you do it like me here on the right side of the road? interesting. I'm not sure which way is better. I personally like my way because if there's a car coming, you can't, you won't be able to see car, oncoming cars. And if there's a car coming there in the middle of the road, you're already like set up so that you don't hit it. But at the same time, you get less visibility. You know, so it's kind of like trade-off. little corner action. So now I'm back by myself taking the long way home. I'm showing this clip here actually because the guy in the truck he's pretty cool. He's going fast, you know. Not much else to say about that. Having a good time. And it's like... How... I don't, know to, I don't know how to say it. It's like... At the speed I'm going, okay, it's not that dangerous. But if you start turning the wick up and being like, I want to go as fast as I can... That's like where things start getting real dangerous real fast. Because... You're out there trying to push the limits and improve your skills, right? So you're doing things that you've never done before in terms of, like, grip and level of lean and all that. You know, lean angle, grip, level of throttle you're giving the bike in the corner, how late you're braking. All these things that you have to do to actually go faster. You're pushing further and further. And if you push one of them too far and make a mistake and don't get it right, you know, again, you're going to crash. So, now we're on a road, this is a dangerous road, you know, but I like it so, this is still like my favorite road, Fairfax Station Road, it's just so free flowing, and there's not very many houses or anything, it's kind of like vacant and empty out here. Yeah, we're getting to the end of the video. I don't really have too much to say. Um, I 
this point, so this is where I turn around and kind of approach the road a little more quickly. You know what I'm saying? But um, I guess I'll recap some of the things. Um, so, you know, first part of the video, right? No GPS. I didn't know, uh, I wasn't, I didn't show Vince what I was trying to do, and I went the wrong way. What are you going to do? I, you know, my leadership skills faltered a bit, and I made a mistake. Second part of the video, I'm talking a lot about, you know, how fast do I feel like I should go. And I'm kind of rambling about it, because I don't really know. It's something at this point in my life I'm very unsure about how fast I want to go. So I'm going back and forth and all over the place, and I don't really have a conclusion. I'm also talking about viewing your own footage. Um, guy with the R1. If you are interested, thank you to, for watching. And, um,. I mean, I don't really care. It's not like I did this for you. It's just like... It's good to see yourself ride, for sure. Whether, you know, again, it's positive or negative. And... That's all I can say about that. It doesn't look like I'm going that fast, but I mean, if I were to slide out and crash or, like, miss the turn... It's just like, how can I miss the turn? You just steer the bike and it goes where you want. It's not like one time you're going to steer the bike and it's not going to turn. You know what I mean? Something really exceptional would have to happen to make it so you're going to, like, crash. But at the same time, it's not that hard. It happens to so many people every year that you can't act like you're, like, the best in the world and you'll never make a mistake. More speed equals more risk. So we're about to exit Clifton here, I think. Well, maybe there's a little more getting out of Clifton. So again, it's like you see that sign that says 20 miles an hour, and you're like, yes, that's the place to be. The all over the place place, you know, where I am, just all over the place. So, here's an exceptional moment. Oh man, getting in the green light onto the Fairfax County Parkway, Pope's Head Road. Just right there. Ooh, not even stopping. That was beautiful. You know, that's just like one of those super rare moments that you get that are just amazing. You pull up right at the right time for something like that. So we're going to end this with a little car spotting. Boom. Just like at the beginning, we had a blurry 911 GT4. Now we've got a blurry McLaren something. MP412C, maybe? 650S? I, I can't tell. I'm not an expert on, on, your, on your McLarens, but it was one of them. I think it was the MP4. It looked like the older, original one. I like this little turn onto West Church Street, or W Church Street. As it's written, so big, big, long sweeper, yeah, phrasing. And there you can see a Mercedes SLS, not SLS, a Mercedes GT. Was it the AMG GT? There at the end. All right, guys, think about your riding. <laughs>